visiting today uh, and you haven't come before, we, we have a little gift for you, which um, is in the welcome alcove after the service. If you don't mind just filling in your name and a contact number and give it to me and then we can give you the water bottle. And especially if you haven't bought a Father's Day present for your dad yet, I think the Wesley water bottle actually will be a good start at least, you know. You can put something else in here besides water, maybe they would really appreciate that. We, um, we're going to begin with our Luchnos to remind us of God's presence amongst us. And I'm going to invite Wendy and Sandra to come and to do it for us. Thank you. Let us be quiet for a moment. Let us pray. Creator God, in the beginning your word subdued the chaos, and in the fullness of time you sent Jesus, your Son, to rebuke the forces of evil and to make all things new. By that same power, transform our fear into faith, that we may have courage to follow in the way of your kingdom, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Just before we get into the worship and song, I'm going to ask Caitlin, where is Caitlin? Caitlin's going to come and read a poem, or a, uh, is it a poem? Prayer? Poem? Poem for the dads. And when we finish, Jason, if we could also just show the DVD clip. The essence of the Father's role is to mirror God's own heart and to value instruction in God's ways with the grace that God imparts. Every father needs God's wisdom to carry out his role as the tower of strength and support for each fragile heart he holds. And there's no greater reward in life for a father to take his place and uphold values of the Lord with integrity and grace.
don't think that one dad realized that there's a five second rule. As long as you pick it up in five seconds, your kid can keep eating. <laughs> Right, guys, can we stand? And just while we stand, I think we, we, we've had a wonderful morning where, where the fathers have been really blessed. Uh, I know I was blessed by a really early wake up with bookmarks and all sorts of explanation gifts that, that, that were thrust upon me. But we've come here this morning for an hour and a half to spend time with our Father. And let's, let's use this opportunity to bless Him with our gifts. Oh, happy day, happy day, you 
Lord, we just want to raise you up this morning. We thank you that you are our dad. And we just want to give you all the glory. We want to give you all the glory. We want to sing to you. We want to praise you. We want to remember everything that you've done for us. How great you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord. Just while your eyes are, are bowed, can I propose this? I don't know if this is something that we do, but if any of you would like to, to lift up a prayer right now, please feel free. Just, just speak it out where you are. Just, just give him the glory.
Thank you, Lord, that you're our healer. And we just really just pray for that right now, that you would just bring healing. In your awesome power, you would just come and flow through that body and just take away the cancer. Thank you, Danny, for being here. Thank you, Lord. All right, if those that can are doing the collection, if you don't mind, just uh, moving out into the congregation. <coughs> Lord, as we receive these gifts today, we want to thank you that you are the perfect parent. We know that as fathers, we are not perfect, but Lord, you are the perfect parent. We thank you for your compassion, for your wisdom and your understanding, for your love for each one of us. The one thing that unites us all today in this place of worship, whether we are young or old, male or female, is that we can turn to you as our heavenly father, as our parent. And so, Father, as the children leave now, we pray, Lord, that you would bless them and their teachers. May you instill within them the great knowledge that you are a God who cares for your children. And so receive these gifts as well as our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.
We, we are continuing in our, in our series today on the Holy Spirit and uh, how the Spirit guides us is our theme for today. So I'm going to ask Jenny and Jeanette to, to lead us in the scriptures. So listen out for what the word says and then we'll try and link it in later on together. Thank you, ladies. Our first reading this morning is taken from the book of Exodus, from chapter 13, starting at verse 17. It's titled, Crossing the Sea. This is a new way to do it. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter. For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the desert road toward the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of Egypt armed for battle. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him because Joseph had made the sons of Israel swear an oath. He he had said, God will surely come to your aid and then you must carry my bones up with you from this place. After leaving Succoth, they camped at Etam on the edge of the desert. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so that they could travel by day or night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night, left its place in front of the people. Thanks be to God. Amen. The second reading is taken from the Gospel of John, and it's chapter 16, verses 12 to 16. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will not do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name. Sorry, I have got the wrong page. <laughs> but it's not bad to hear the word of God. <laughs> I knew when I was reading it, it doesn't sound right. <laughs> John 16, not 14. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. Thanks be to God for his word. Spirit, moving in my heart, 
Thank you to the messengers. And I see you got some new members in the messengers yes. today. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you, Val, and to the messengers for leading us in the anthem. I'm going to invite us to spend some time praying together. Um, as you know, in our notices, we always include people that are requesting us to pray for them. Just so please, if you would take note of some people there, and if you would raise your prayers for them. And, and while we are doing this, you would see on the, on the notice board in, in the notices that tomorrow we're going to be joining together in a day of prayer. Now, this doesn't take uh, the place of the normal day of prayer, which we have in September. But we've, we've had a message that's come down from our presiding bishop and the connectional office inviting and asking the Methodist people to pray on a weekly basis now for the upcoming elections, 3rd of August. And so we thought, let's just jump in and not, you know, not, not plan it per se, but invite folk at Wesley on a Monday, for, the, for every Monday now up until the elections, if we would pause to pray for our country. So if you would like to pray at home or at work, you can, you can do that. Um, our prayer group still meets on a Monday at half past three, so if you're driving past the church at that time and want to join them, you all, you're welcome to do that. Presbury Methodists are going to do their day of prayer on a Tuesday, and uh, I'm sure the other circuit uh, churches will get back to you about what day they're going to be praying on. So this is just to pray for our country, and as you know, our country needs prayer. Mm-hmm. Lots of it. So we're going to begin that as we, as we pray now, as well as for our own needs. So let's pray. Lord, when we read through the scriptures, we are reminded that prayer is powerful. That when the disciples gathered together to pray, that you heard their prayers and you answered them. Not always in the ways that they expected, but Lord, you answered. And so we come together as your Christ followers. And Father, we are are bringing today these prayer requests before you. Our, Our deepest prayer is for our nation. And yes, there are many, many, many problems. But God, we are praying for the upcoming elections, that you would guide our leaders, that you also would guide us. Lord, we pray that our land in the midst of the turmoil and and the strife, that there would still be hope and peace. Lord, we also want to pray for the many people in our families or in friendship circles, colleagues, people that are struggling, whatever aspect of their lives they're struggling, and Lord, we want to pray for them now. Just in the quietness, I invite you to lift up their names before the Lord. Lord, we also want to pray for the young people of our nation and the world. We remember that this last week we celebrated Youth Day, 40 years on from uh, 1976, when young people made history in a way, although it was tragic. And Lord, we know that our young people are not just the generation of tomorrow, but they're the generation of now. And Sometimes we don't know how to lead them or to even guide them, but we thank you, Lord, that you are willing to be their leader and their guide. And lastly, Lord, we pray for ourselves. I know as you've come to church this morning, one or two of you have great needs. Just offer that prayer to God now in the silence. Please join me as we bring our time of prayer to a close, as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
we, we're going to sing together as a congregation hymn 286. And uh, if you just follow the progression in, the, in each verse, it's a very wonderful image of the Spirit of God. It's verse 1 is gracious spirit, verse 2 is truthful spirit, verse 3 is silent spirit, mighty spirit, verse 4, and then holy spirit, verse 5. And each of the words of that hymn speak about the different aspects of God's spirit. So let's be upstanding and uh, sing together 286. I'm going to read from Acts chapter 16, so if you'd like to follow in your Bibles, few Bibles, or you can read from the projector. Acts chapter 16 comes in a, in a wonderful sequence of events that records what was happening in the life of the early church. And uh, in this particular passage, Timothy, Paul, and Silas have gone out on, uh, on a, missionary, a missionary journey. And uh, we pick up just verse 6 to, to 10. It's called Paul's Vision of the Man from Macedonia. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. And we thank God for this part of his word to us this morning. The sermon notes would have been in the notices you got this morning, and there's a few words that we're going to fill in. Uh, as we go along, they, 
they all begin with the letter S. It's for the Booble fans amongst us so they can actually follow along, you know. So it's just five S's. Five S's for, for sharks. Sharks. <laughs> About 14 years ago, um, a man in the congregation that I was serving in came to see me about a situation in his life and he was needing some counsel. And obviously I can't go into detail because that would break the, the confidentiality, but what he was coming to ask my counsel in is, was a big decision. The kind of decision that happens every now and again in each one of our lives where we, we really agonize over what is the right decision, what is the right choice to make. I think you would relate to some of these. It could be things like buying a home or getting married or having children, changing jobs. I mean, you name it. There's a whole lot of these big, big decisions, maybe immigrating or whatever it may, may be. And when we were chatting about it, obviously I couldn't tell him what to do, but I was happy just to listen to him and try and offer him some counsel. This man really, really wanted to know what was God's will for his life. He was almost saying to me, tell me what God wants me to do and I will do it. And I think we can relate to that on some, some level. And so that's why I think today's topic on how the Spirit guides us is a very relevant topic. Because if it hasn't happened to you already, it will happen. And maybe there's some of us sitting here today who are in the process of trying to discern what God wants you to do. Now in this whole season or series on, on the Holy Spirit, we've spoken about how God helps us to pray about, about how God empowers us with, with spiritual gifts. And today's topic is on how does the Spirit, the Spirit that God places within us, how does God's Spirit guide us? And that's going to be um, the topic that we're going to unpack. Let me just add on to this in saying that I think God, as a, as a heavenly parent or as a father, is gracious enough to allow you and I to make the small decisions of our own accord. You know, I don't think God really minds if you decide in the morning to have peanut butter on your toast or whether you have marmalade jam. I, I think God is saying, you know, go for it. Choose. Choose. If you take this route to work or that route to work, God's like, that's fine. I've given you a brain. Use it. Yeah. But when it comes to those big decisions, how do we know what God wants us to do? Now, there's a quote here from George Truitt, and he says this, The greatest knowledge is to know God's will. And the greatest work is to do God's will. So not just to know it, but then to do it. Now the good news for us today, right from the beginning, is that I, I want to affirm, and I want to show you through some of the scriptures, that the good news is God wants to help us. He wants to guide us. God does not take great delight in, in watching us struggle and say, well, let me see how this person can really, really struggle. I'm going to give them no help whatsoever. God wants to help us. Now, in the Old Testament, we read from uh, Exodus that God helped the Israelites in a certain way. They, they didn't go through the short route. They went in the long route. And as they went in the daytime, God gave them a what? Cloud. And then in the, in the nighttime, God gave them a? Fire. Pillar of fire. And that was, as the Bible tells us, that was their, their direction. They followed the cloud in the daytime. They followed the, the pillar of fire at night. And that's how they ended up 40 years later landing up in the promised land. They were obedient, they followed God, and they got there. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, in 2016, God's not going to do that for you and I. Because if we walk out of church this, this morning, we're going to go out there and say, now, which cloud is mine? You know, maybe, maybe that's Oliver's cloud, and I think, well, that looks like my cloud. I'm going to follow that cloud, but actually my cloud is that side. And tonight, I'm not sure which pillar of fire I'm going to follow, and I'm going to end up getting lost. God has given us a different pillar of, of fire and a cloud, and that is His Holy Spirit. So God's Spirit can dwell within my heart, in your heart, independently, but it's the same Spirit that God gives to us, the Bible tells, who wants to lead us and who wants to guide us. So let me just clarify this by looking at the Scriptures on your sermon note. There are, are a few of them. There are many more than this, but I just wanted to show you the good news. Uh, Exodus 13, we've covered that. The Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud, and he provided light at night with a pillar of fire. There's a reading that I haven't put on here, but just write this down. Isaiah 58, verse 11. Isaiah 58, 11. Isaiah says this, The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. 
This one here on the sermon notes, Psalm 32, verse 8. I love this one. I think for all of us as Christ followers, this is one that we should, should highlight and, and put on your fridge or wherever. The Lord says, I will guide you, listen to what it says, along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Luke chapter 1, verse 79, when Luke wrote about the Messiah coming into the world, it says the Messiah will come to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and he will come to guide us into the path of peace. John 16, verse 13 is the one on the sermon note here. When the spirit of truth comes, he will confuse you into all confusion. No, that's what my Bible says here. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Eugene Peterson in the message writes it like this. When the friend comes, the spirit of truth, he will take you by the hand and he will guide you into all the truth that there is. So, as Oliver said this morning, we can smile about that, people. God wants to guide us. He wants to lead us into the best pathway for our lives. That is the good news. But here we need to get a bit more practical. And so how is God going to do this? Um, I also just want to say right in the beginning, I'm grateful for Nicky Gumbel and his wisdom in, in some of these uh, five things. Um, certainly has helped us in, in getting this practical. So there are five things I'm going to share with us this morning. And I invite you to write the words down in, in the gap that is there. The first one is that I believe that God guides us through the Scriptures. Um, there's two of them, Psalm 119, verse 98. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are my constant GPS. <laughs> Psalm 119, verse 13. Di direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. And so if you are here today um, or at a stage in your life where you're, you're seeking guidance, I believe the Spirit of God can lead us to a scripture, a relevant scripture that can help us make a decision. Let me give you a practical and personal example. In 2007, I felt a prompting from the Spirit to write the book Living Oceans Apart, which some of you have read, thankfully. And there was a time just before I started writing it where I thought, I'm not sure if this is my idea or God's idea. And so I said to the Lord, I need some scriptural confirmation. And so I was reading through the Bible one day, and this is the scripture that I felt God impressed upon me. And this is from 1 Chronicles 17, verse 2. The scripture that came to me that day was this. Whatever you have in mind, do it, for God is with you. Now that was a slap right upside the head. I could not duck and dive from that because I asked for the scripture and that was the scripture God had given to me. But let me caution us. We don't read the scriptures when we've decided to do something and then look for the scripture to back up what we've already decided. It's very dangerous. Let me give you a random example. Let me say I'm sitting in my office tomorrow morning. I'm thinking to myself, I really want to defraud my company. I want to rob my boss. And I'm wondering if it's the right thing to do or not. Lord, could you give me a scripture just to know if this is of you or not? And then I turn to 1 Chronicles 17. Whatever you have in mind, do it. For God is with you. Do you see the danger? It's a pretty obvious thing, isn't it? We can't just take a verse out of context and say, well, that's what God wants me to do because I've gone and skipped over a whole lot of other scriptures that speak about lying and stealing and the Ten Commandments. And I've, I've overlooked the spirit of the word in favor of trying to get my own way. So the first thing is turn to the scriptures. They will give you guidance. But I do believe we need to read the scriptures systematically. Don't just open and flick your finger and go, oh, that's the word for me. It can be very dangerous. It can work, but sometimes not always. Okay, the second S stands for spirit. And maybe it's a little bit confusing in some sense. Let me explain. I really believe that our spirit is in tune with God's spirit when we are doing the right thing. So maybe the, the correct word would be a sense of peace. As Paul says, the peace that passes all understanding. 
And so let's say you're choosing option A, and you felt the scripture leading you into it, and you st but you're feeling very much at peace about it. I would say that that is more than likely God's spirit confirming your decision. Okay, if you're feeling very uneasy about it, it could be God's spirit saying, just be careful. But let me also warn and say, sometimes we ourselves are very scared about something, and so what we are feeling as unease could be God moving us out of our comfort zones. Mm -hmm. We had an example this morning, and maybe I'll use it as an announcement. On Tuesday at the WA, there's a lady coming to speak. She's from Padka about when is the right time to move into a retirement village. Okay, mm -hmm. now this was announced at the early morning service. I did not know this, but I think it's a wonderful, wonderful example. Because I think for some of us, when we get to that age, mm -hmm. we know we may need to downscale and so on. But it's a very, very difficult thing. Those of you who have experienced that, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So you may not feel comfortable with having to downscale, but you can feel at peace about it. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. God may move me out of a comfort zone, but deep within myself I know it's actually what he wants me to do, but it's going to be hard for me. Paul says in Colossians 3, verse 15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are all called to peace. Now, with this whole thing on the, on the Spirit, we come to that passage I read from Acts chapter 16, and it's interesting that this is what happened. And I read verse 10 again. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. It was, the, according to Acts, it was the spirit that stopped them, and then it was the spirit that led them. And they were open in their hearts to be able to say, Lord, okay, yes, I hear this from you, and, and we'll change direction. But John has a good warning for us, 1 John 4, verse 1. Dear friends, don't believe every spirit. You know, you could just wake up with indigestion and think to yourself, gee, that's God telling me, no? Maybe it's just something you ate. But test the spirits to see whether they're from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Christ has come in the flesh is from God, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. Okay, so that's just an example. Let's go to the third one, and the third S stands for sense. Just before some of you English people are getting worried about my spelling, not sense in the money sense, but common sense. Does the decision that you feel God's Spirit leading you into, does it make sense? And here I think we need to be careful of the, the phrase common sense, because what may be common sense to you is not common sense to the world. And so this is where sometimes you need to just put your brain into gear, and this is why I like John Stott. He says, God promises... So God's promises of guidance were not given to save us the problem of thinking. <laughs> you know, God doesn't expect you as a Christ follower to hand over your brain to him and say, thank you, Lord, I now follow you and let God make all your decisions for you. God has given us a brain so that we can make decisions and he will lead us. Of course, we would all prefer. I would love every morning to wake up and have a little WhatsApp waiting for me. <laughs> Dear Dom, this is what I want you to do today. I would love that. You know, wouldn't you? Yes. Then if we did that and it was wrong, we could at least blame someone else. Yes. Or Lord, you told me to do that. <laughs> but often what God wants us to do or asks us to step into makes common sense. Not always, but sometimes it does. Third, uh, fourthly, the, the fourth S stands for saints. And this speaks about the communion of saints, the community. God allows us to be part of a life group, a Bible study, a church community, a family, where there are people who are more wise than we are, certainly in a godly sense. And so if you are needing God's guidance in, in a particular decision, and you felt the scriptures leading you in some way, the spirit leading you in some way, in common sense, it's very helpful to speak to someone who is godly. Somebody who has walked the pathway of faith a bit longer than you have, and to say to them, look, this is what I'm thinking about. Do you, you know, does it make sense to you? And often if you find the right person who's objective, they can lead you into a godly decision. Proverbs 12 verse 15, the wise listen to advice, 
Proverbs 20, verse 18, plans, make plans by seeking advice. And Proverbs 15, verse 22, plans fail for a lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. I would hate to speak against the wisdom of Solomon, but could I just add one thing on there? Sometimes if you ask too many people, you can get too many different answers. Mm -hmm. yes. And then you're like, oh man, that's even worse than when I started. Like 10 say this and 15 say that and 25 say dinner. I don't know what to do anymore. So choose counsel wisely, people that you can trust. And if I can just say this too, try and choose somebody who doesn't want something different for you. Let me come back to my, my friend. Imagine if he had gone to his boss and said to him, listen boss, I'm thinking about taking up another job down the road from, from our work. What do you think about that? <laughs> no, what's his boss going to say? No. Are you stupid? No, of course he's going to say no. But we need to ask people who have our best interest and who want us to follow God's will for our lives. Okay, let me come to the last one and then we'll bring this to a close. The, the fifth S stands for signs, as in signs and wonders. But let me explain what I mean. Verse 6 of Acts 16, Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia and they tried to enter Bithynia, the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to go into that place. Sometimes we want to go in a certain direction. We want to go plan A, and it actually looks all right. It's not breaking any of God's laws. It looks all right. But the Spirit of Jesus says to us, plan A is not the plan I have for you. It's actually plan B. And so God closes the door. Now, it's interesting if you carry on reading in Acts 16, Paul and, and Silas and, and Timothy they believe, they trust in God's direction. They don't go through this door. Now, now, Paul is not the kind of person who breaks down this door A because he says, that's the way that I want to go, I'm going to go. He says, the door is closed. Obviously, there's a reason for this. And so he goes to door B. And it's interesting that in door B, when they go there, the vision comes from the person in Macedonia, come over to Macedonia, and it's in that place. They go over to Macedonia and they're able to convert Lydia. You see that? So plan A was closed for a reason because God needed them in Macedonia for the purpose of preaching to Lydia, who gave her life to the Lord and became a stalwart in the early church. Now we mustn't stop the story there because that's painting it too nicely. What happens in plan B is they, they save Lydia, they, they preach the gospel to her, but then they arrested. You know, can you imagine Paul and Silas saying, thank you, Jesus. Plan A, you closed the door. I took plan B because you gave me the SMS, and I'm here now, and now you have me arrested. What kind of heavenly father are you? Hey, what kind of God are you? You lead me down this path, and now I'm arrested. But if you read Paul and Silas, they've come to a point in their faith where they understand that God's plan is bigger than their plan. If you read on in verse, uh, chapter 16, they pray, they worship God, and then an earthquake takes place. And then they are freed. And the jailer comes, and he's worried that all the prisoners have escaped, and they are able to minister to the jailer and lead the jailer and his family to Christ. Friends, God is not going to make a pathway for us so there's no obstacles. If you have been deceived into following Jesus, believing that your life will be perfect and smooth, I'm sorry, someone lied to you. But God's Spirit will lead us, as the, as the psalm says, into what is the best pathway for our lives. We don't always understand how and why, but that's God's good news story for us. And maybe for some of you here today, you have found yourself led down a path and you've come to a door that's closed. Maybe just be patient and wait for God to open another door. Or maybe God has shown you through the scriptures and through counsel that there is another way. Trust him. Let me also say this before I come to a close. If you have looked at these five things as a starting point, scripture, spirit, sense, saints, and signs, and you have now got to the point in your life 
where you've made a decision. Because this is the other thing that God does, is he allows us the, the freedom to make a decision. If you've got to that point and you said, Lord, I think it's this way, in faith I'm going to go like this, and it turns out to be wrong, don't panic. God is gracious enough to say, I actually need you here. Because if we've made the decision, seeking God's counsel, desperately wanting to do what God's will for us, and we've said, Lord, help me, and we've gone this way, God is not going to pull out the whip and go, stupid, stupid. We, we've said, Lord, I really believe this is where you want me to go. And if God says, well, it's not quite this way, he will lead us back to the right path. What is worse is if we sit there like a little boat tossing about in the waves of the sea, saying, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. If you're waiting for the writing on the sky, then you may wait for the rest of your life, and it's going to be very, you're going to get seasick. You're going to come to a point where we have to decide using all the evidence we have in front of us, because God's Spirit wants, coming back to the psalm, wants what is the best pathway for our lives. Let me share one little last bit of good news with us before we pray. We don't have to worry about asking for directions from other people because the good news is we have the God who goes with us. And the God himself is Jesus. And so as we enter into um, our life and in, in a step in faith, we know that the God, if you imagine a hike, we have a God who goes with us all the time. And that is the Spirit of God. And so for those of you who are finding yourselves here today thinking about a decision, I pray that you would test this. May God's Spirit guide you. For those of us who will need this in a few weeks or months' time, may God's Spirit guide you too. And may we step out in faith and know that His Spirit will lead us to the best pathway for our lives. I'm going to stop there. May God add His blessing to His Scriptures. Please forget any nonsense that I've spoken, but anything of God you must at least reflect on. Come, let us pray. God, I, I would guess that within the church today there are one or two of us who are wrestling with big decisions. Things that could be life-changing. And so, Lord, I thank you for the best news of all that you are a God who goes with us. Lord, we often wish that we would open up our email to tomorrow morning or on a morning and you would have the, this list of ten things that we have to do because it would make it easier for us. But Lord, in your grace and your freedom, you have not made us your puppets on a string, but you have made us your children and you've given us free will. You've given us your word, your spirit. You've given us companions. You've given us church community so that we can wrestle with what is the right way. And so I would ask that, Lord, your spirit would guide those of us who are in this place right now today, that we would be able to trust in your plan for our lives. Lord, I also want you just to, to pray for those people that may be struggling with other areas of their lives. God, I pray that your spirit would rest upon us and we would experience the peace that passes all understanding. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing our closing hymn in a moment, but I just want to draw our attention to one or two notices, and then we will close. Um, particularly the, the one about the Presbury fate, as you, you may be aware that Colin and I are overseeing Presbury as well as Wesley for this year. And so please would you support, if you're around on Saturday morning, the Presbury fate from half past seven to one o'clock. Lots of nice goodies there, food and all kinds of things. That's this Saturday coming up now. Uh, Kim hasn't put this in here, but remember the Holiday Club starts on the 27th. 27th. Um, and that'll be for that whole week, 27th of, of June. Maybe um, I see one or two of the stewards here. Maybe I'm going to embarrass them now. Saki, could you stand for us? And Dustin, is he, is he, is he with Nate? He's outside. Oh, okay. Um, if you want to speak to one of the leaders after the service, Saki is here and, and Dustin is outside and Mark Ferreira is also upstairs looking after the kids. 
Thanks, Saki. Okay, you can sit down now. You can forgive me, hey? You'll forgive me? Um, or you can come chat to me after the service and we'll try and uh, help you out. Okay, friends, God bless you. Let's sing together our closing hymn and then we can uh, continue with our Father's Day. Our closing hymn is God's Spirit is in my heart. He has called me and set me apart. This is what I have to do, what I have to do. Let's stand and sing together. Should we join hand? Wait, the boss wants to make an announcement. <laughs> Kim is mentioning that uh, Karen, where's the family? Yeah, it's your guys, your last Sunday with us, is it? Oh, shame, man. We, can we say a prayer with you before you go? Um, come, let's pray. Lord, we, we want to pray for Karen and the, the children. We thank you, Lord God, that they have been uh, such a part of our community and in, in Maritzburg for, for many years. We pray, Lord God, that as they begin a new chapter in their lives, that you would go with them, and that your spirit would give them strength and courage. We will miss them, Lord, but we know that you will take good care of them. And so bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall we join hands together as we say the benediction? And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.
Amen. Good.